Call the meeting to order. Mr. Yule. Here. Mr. Collins. Here. Mrs. Flansburg. Here. Mr. Del Sandro. Here. Mr. Signor. Here. Chairman Denny. Here. Mr. Comenzo. Here. Mr. Tingley. Mr. Tingley. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. Uh, audio. No. No. Now we can. Yeah, now, yep. <laughs> and Mr. Calder is excused. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I need a motion to approve the minutes. Some of the minutes from the last meeting, please. I'll make that motion. Motion made by. Doesn't matter. I, I wasn't looking up when you said that. Clark, was it Clark? Yeah. And yeah. seconded by. Joe. I'll second it. By oh. Joe. And on the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. I'm going to abstain as I was not at the last meeting. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, we got a lot of uh, waivers here tonight to go through. So uh, the first one is of Matthew Banks, 93 West Campbell Road. The applicant requests a waiver of site plan review to operate the vendor square. <laughs> A gift shop selling located, yeah, excuse me, a gift shop selling local made goods in tenant space J128. Former Dairy Queen Orange, Ju Orange, Juice, uh, Orange Julius, 358 square feet of, uh, I'm losing my track here today. I'm not paying attention. 358 square feet from April 2nd to 21st to April, October 2nd, 2021, in the Via Port Republic, Rotterdam, New York. <clears throat> There's no one here to uh, uh, tell us anything about this tonight, but it's simply a, a gift shop selling local made goods. So, uh, anybody have any questions, comments? No, just no. a comment that they specifically said they were starting off just going to do weekends only and see how business progresses. Maybe they'll pick up. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the waiver, Mr. Chairman. Motion made by Ms. Flansburg. I need a second on the motion. I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Collins. On the vote, please. Mr. Ewell. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried. Hang on a second here. I have trouble, trouble reading this because I got the wrong glasses on, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, do you want me to read them for you tonight? No, I'll, I'll, I'm on. I'll do it. I'll, I'm all set. Go right on. Rodden, Rodden Adventures LLC, 93 West Campbell Road. The applicant requests a waiver of site plan review to operate a 103,000 square foot retail warehouse distrib distribution facility for United Auto Supply, a 5.81 acre site. In the former Sears location in Leoport. There are some people here tonight that, that we can, if we need to uh, uh, find out exactly what's going on, to give us some insight as to what's going to be happening there. Uh, uh, Mr. Trasher, is he online? Yes, I am. Okay. So well, we have uh, you know, a few of the people may have some, a few of our members. I asked some questions they might be, want to talk, ask you about. Uh, Actually, some of the things that we made mention of was uh, the size of the retail store and your hours and uh, your receiving hours. There were a couple of things that we were concerned with. So let's go from there. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to the board to see if anyone has any questions about it. Mr. Yule. Uh, now, they, you've got a retail store and uh, just for a small portion of it. And then the rest of it is going to be the warehouse. Correct. Distribute um, your product. Correct. So, uh, you, would you like me to share my screen? To sh uh, I can show you like a layout plan of the space that was the former Sears, if you'd like me to. Yeah, so that's fine. Be good. Yep. <clears throat> okay, everyone, can you uh, see? Yep. 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 Nice. Uh, I'll blow it up a little bit. So, uh, to the 
Page North, uh, so we'll use that. This is the former main entrance to Sears. Um, this will be utilized. Um, th these doors will be closed off employee entrance only or for emergency exits only. So that it will be denoted that way. So in this area will be for um, storage of auto parts and racking. Um, United Auto Supply, they're headquartered in, I'll give you a little overview, headquartered in Syracuse, New York. A uh, family operation um, started in a small retail business that has grown over the last 25 years. And now they're a major distributor of auto parts, uh, um, Ford Motocraft, AC Delco, all the auto dealers. And then they do um, off-brand stuff as well. Um, and especially now with the e-commerce stuff, um, Rock Auto and some of these other uh, online folks um, utilize and um, they ship uh, parts sort of across the country. So this will be that area of warehousing. This will be shipping and distribution, the loading docks in this area. The retail area where customers would come in is this portion, approximately 2,000 square feet of the building. Folks would enter here. This is counter, um, you know, uh, quarts of oil, small products like that are stacked here. But if you needed to come in and get a battery, a muffler, you know, rotor shocks, um, you come up to the counter, um, tell the uh, customer uh, sales associate what you need, and then they pick the parts and give it back to you. So this area is where that takes place. Um, over here is some shipping and receiving where parts that need to go to local auto dealers ships up and down the North way. Um, and in the greater Albany area, folks would come to the counters and they have cars that do uh, 29 minute deliveries to uh, local uh, dealers and auto repair places. So that's roughly the plan. Um, no external changes, the, there would be changes in signage, but in terms of the parking lot landscaping, doors, current access points. No, they've gone in here and really stripped the inside of the old Sears and it's a shell, um, polished the floors, painted the inside of the building and are looking for your waiver so that they can continue down the process to opening this facility. Okay. Oh, I, uh, think that's a, I think that's a good use for that building. It's nice to see uh, some of those places coming back. That was one of the anchor stores. So uh, welcome to Rotterdam. Looking forward to uh, opening up soon. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Okay, can you take your uh, drawing down, please? Yep. Okay, uh, Mr. Del Sandro, any questions for this gentleman? No, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, I have no questions at this time. Okay, uh, how about Mr. Mr. Signor? No, Jack. No. You're happy? That's good. I hear that. <laughs> uh, Ms. Flansburg. Uh, no questions. Just a good reuse of the space in the building. Hopefully bringing more people into the building, whether they're employees or customers. Okay. And Clark, Mr. Clark. Uh, I'm good with it. You're good with it also. Jack, did, did you say there was going to be retail there as well? Yeah, he explained that to you. There's a retail store there. You can go to the counter and get your muffler or batteries. Yeah. Did you hear him say that? Yeah, well, that's what I, I thought I heard. That's why I'm I'm asking again. Yeah, yeah I yeah, thought there, I heard there's going to be a retail store there, yes. Correct. 2,000 square feet of the 103,000 square feet will be a retail space. Um, and then wow. the, the remainder of it will be, uh, you know, for the warehouse distribution. But parts will be stored in the back for that small retail component as well. You okay with that, Joe? I'm good with that, yeah. Okay, I need a motion on the waiver. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion that we approve that waiver. Motion made by Mr. Yule. I'll second it, Jack. Seconded by Mr. Del Sandro on the vote, please. Mr. Yule? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mrs. Flansburg? Yes. Mr. Del Sandro? Yes. Mr. Signor? Yes. Chairman Denny? Yes, Mr. Terry. Okay, uh, next thing on the agenda, 
Thank you. Noise? I'm hearing music or noise in the background from someone. Okay, next thing on the agenda, National Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation. Dad, we need to stop that noise in the background. Very disturbing. Who is it? I don't know. It, it looks like it's Ben. Ben Weisel. There's music in the in the background. You can Hello. Yeah, do you have something in the background? It looks like your microphone is kind of bouncing up and down. I don't know if it was you or not, but you're here for the next one, so I guess. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I apologize. There, there definitely is no music here. I'm sitting in a quiet uh, living room, and my family's upstairs with no music on. I apologize if you if you hear music. No, that's all right. We didn't know it was you. No, it's not for you. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Back to uh, National Niagara Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation, Skimmerhorn Road. The applicant requests the waiver site plan review to install a 75 foot communications tower. With microwave antennas within existing utility electrical substation for prevention of loss of power. You know, you guys got any idea what that is at Skimmerhorn Road? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weisel, Weisel, am I saying that right? Yeah, sure. Uh, this has been Weisel. I, I'd be happy to make a, a very brief, maybe four or five minute presentation, just explain what we're doing if that helps. Well, that would be that would be a good idea. Go ahead and do that so we can understand what's happening there. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, hi everyone. My name is Ben Weisel, and I'm an attorney for Niagara Mohawk Power Corporation, uh, which does business as National Grid. Uh, National Grid currently operates an electric substation at 19 Skimmerhorn Road in the town of Rotterdam, Rotterdam which is just west of 890. Uh, this substation currently provides safe and reliable electricity to nearly 5,000 homes and businesses in the Rotterdam area. It's also critical to the continued operation of several transmission lines, distribution lines, and other substations in the area. For several decades, uh, National Grid has relied on Verizon's existing underground public switch telephone network as its communication system between this station and other substations in the area. Verizon's communication system has been critical to ensuring reliable utility service and avoidance of outages caused by damaging storms or fallen trees. One of the important functions of Verizon's existing communication system is something called protective relaying. Protective relaying causes the prompt removal from service of an element of a power system when it suffers a short circuit or when it starts to operate in an abnormal manner that might cause an, a power outage. So for example, if there's a power surge at the Rotterdam station, the Verizon communication system allows National Grid to control the breaker at the station and disconnect the load before it damages the equipment or travels to other stations, which could cause a blackout over a large geographic area. The protective relay system is critical to our ability to operate the electric system at the worst possible times, like during severe weather events and other disasters. And it has to work within milliseconds to prevent a blackout. We're here tonight because Verizon recently informed National Grid that they are retiring their public switch telephone network. Our engineers have determined that a microwave solution built, owned, and managed by National Grid will provide the best possible replacement when Verizon system is no longer an option. At the Rotterdam station, this will involve the installation of a, of a microwave antenna on a newly installed 75, 75 foot tall lattice tower. Microwave radio technology is highly reliable and will allow National Grid to monitor and control operations in real time. So if there's a fault on a power line at the Rotterdam substation, it can quickly be isolated, power can be rerouted, and we can avoid a widespread outage and damage. To be even more specific, the microwave system is built to function 99.999% of the time, which is actually more reliable than the Verizon system so this will be, actually be an improvement. So if I can share my screen, okay. I can yeah, show go you. Ahead. Thank go you. ahead. Perfect. You sure? So the, the lattice tower is going to be installed in the center of a 28 acre substation. I'm sorry, actually not there. It says in your, look at right there, I apologize, right there. 
So we're about 1,500 feet from the closest home, which is located on Rice's Road, about 2,000 feet to the second closest home, which is lo located to the west on Gordon Road. Um, there are lots and lots of existing trees on the east side of the station. There are lots of existing lattice towers that are similar in size and similar in design to the proposed lattice tower. So we, we feel like the centralized location of this lattice tower in the center of the substation will really mitigate the visual impact. Um, as I, as I, as for the reasons that I described before, the lattice tower is very important to this critical substation. Um, and we're available for any questions you might have. So thank you very much. Okay, take your drawing, take your picture down there, please. No problem. Okay, uh, let me pull the board and see if anybody has any questions as about the tower. Uh, Mr. Yule. You're muted. He's, he's muted. Tom, you're muted. Um, I, I said it really uh, doesn't look like you have any choice. The um, Verizon taking their um, system down. So you're going to need to uh, come up with a, uh, a system that you can operate and it'll probably end up being better than what you uh, had originally had. So I don't see a problem with it. It's up out of the way. I think it's up. Is that up on the uh, hilltop where the turbines used to be? GE used to have the turbines up there. Ben? It's up on the hilltop. I, uh, we have several other members from, from National Grid. Does, does anyone else know if, if GE used to operate in this area? They used to have eight turbines up on top of that ridge. Off yeah, of they it. did. Yeah, I, I think, think that's the one. And they were gas turbines. And when they fired them up, it sucked all the gas out of the line. So they had to change them to oil. So Was it up, there on, was it up at, at that uh, substation? I think it was. I, yeah, I've, been up there, I've been up there and I, I don't remember the gas turbines, but it might have been a while ago. Well, they've been gone for a long time. Yeah. yeah. No, you're oh, right. All right. No, I, I think it's a great, great use for that property. And I don't think anybody will ever see that tower up there. So uh, good luck. Hey, thank you so much. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, Mr. Signor, uh, any questions about the tower? Um, what, uh, ben, what is the um, timeline for this? Uh, we're going to be installing this as, as soon as possible because it's our understanding that Verizon will be retiring its system at the end of this year. So it's my understanding that once we pull the building permit, we're going to start construction within the next uh, two or three months. How long does it take to complete one of these towers once you start? Uh, let's see. So Kay, our, uh, Kay from National Grid is also on the line. Kay, do you know, or, or uh, Bill Hopkins, do you know how long it takes to install? Hi, this is Kay. I think it takes about three months from ordering to, in, to install. I, I, just, I was just curious. That's, that's fine, Ben. Yeah the, yeah, the actual installation of the tower itself will probably be completed in about six weeks, and then it's all uh, internal wiring and whatnot from there. Okay. okay. Okay with that, Joe? Yeah. Mr. Del Sandro, any questions or comments? No, Mr. Chairman, that's a good place for if it's, it's out of the way from residents. Um, I mean, they they got to do they, they got to do what they have to do. So, no, I have no no problems at all with it. That's all. Thank you, uh, Ms. Flansburg. No questions, Mr. Chairman. The others have covered it. No questions, and uh, Mr. Collins. No questions, Mr. Chairman. All right. At this time, I need a motion for. Motion to act on the draft negative negative declaration as prepared by the town planner. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion made by Mr. Collins. I'll second. I'll second. Ms. Flansburg on the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried. I need a motion on the waiver. The application of the waiver. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion that we approve the waiver. Motion made by Mr. Yule. Excuse me, boy, I'm having. Motion made by Mr. Yule. 
I'll second it, Jack. That's why Mr. Gosander on the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, let's see where we're after. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> okay. Joe, Joe Melnar, Jr., Mike Epting, 7 Old Marival Road, the applicant requests a waiver of site plan review to operate a bakery, Old Sugar Bakery, and former grooming facility, tenor space uh, number three, on uh, 1.3.3 acres uh, on uh, Marival Road. It's by that Poppy's. I guess you guys can realize what that Poppy's ice cream store is. It's, it's one of those empty spaces there. It's where mm -hmm. Terrace Pet Salon used to be. Yeah. I don't I don't see anybody here from there to give us any information about it, but it's very simple. It's a bakery. So uh, uh, I just wondered if they were going to bake there because it's a very small facility. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't very large when uh, the pet salon was there. So uh, they would be probably limited on what they could bake. Maybe they're bringing it in. Maybe they're baking it elsewhere. I don't know. But that's the only question I had. Really doesn't matter. Well, if you, it, it's a, to operate a bakery. So you're right, Tom. They're probably going to probably gonna do a baking in there, I would think. Maybe. I, I don't know for sure. But, uh, You'd have to uh, go through the health department if they're baking off-site anyway. So. Or uh, on-site. It's not going to, either way, they'll have to be permitted by the health department. So yeah. I think that would be yeah, fine. It's going to go through all the Dunkin' Donuts does bake on their sites. They bring it in all by tractor trailer. Yeah. Right. Only one of them That's is the bakery. Yeah. Okay, I need a uh, motion to accept the, for the waiver. I'll make I'll that make motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion made by Mr. Collins. I'll, I'll second it. Second by Mr. Signor. On the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried again. Very good. Next thing on the agenda, Michael Valletta, 3125 Carm Carmen Road. The applicant requests a waiver of site plan review to create a 1,050 square foot additional tenant space in the town TV building on 1.0 acres parcel. Michael Valletta and Wayne Fitzgerald. Uh, anybody uh, there? No, what, uh, Wayne Fitzgerald's here. Uh, Mickey could not make it. Okay, Wayne. Now let me. Let me turn it over to the board and see if they have any questions. Miss Miss Flansburg. You're muted. Uh, there you go. No, nope, yep, thank you. Yeah. Um, the building or whatever DPW meeting didn't have very many comments. They're just usually our basic ones. But is there any information that you can provide um, since you've completed the application? I know that there's no tenant that was known at the time. Um, are you working with available Base, like, are you growing as much as you possibly can um, with your addition? Well, we're uh, we're going to use the space that we used to have for our um, appliances. We no longer do that, and we're just kind of fitting it up to hopefully be an office space for somebody. Okay. So well, I don't really have any additional information other than that at this time. We haven't actually got a tenant interested. Got it. Right. No, I just didn't know if there was any changes since you completed the application, uh, um, but. You know, you have parking and, and such there for whatever the, the business may be, and you would have to come back before us once a tenant was uh, before you as well. So I have no issues with the project, Mr. Denny. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Del Sandro. I have no questions at this time. Okay. Mr. Collins. No, I went over there today, like I said before, they got 45 parking spaces, so, and all his uh, town TV trucks were off to the side, so I don't see any problem with it. Mr. Yule. No, I don't have any problem. Lynn uh, covered the one point that I wanted to make sure that they were coming back in front of us uh, to uh, approve whoever the tenant is, but with 45 parking spaces there, they should be able to handle pretty much 
uh, anything. You know, the pizza place won't take a lot. The nutrition place might, but other than that, that's a good use. You know, instead of letting part of his building sit empty. So, all right, that's all, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Signor. No problem, Mr. Jack. Okay. At this time, a motion for the waiver. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the waiver. Motion made by Ms. Lansford. Second. I'll second. By, by who? Second. Mr. Yule? Yep. On the vote, please. Mr. Yule? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mrs. Flansburg? Yes. Mr. Delsandro? Yes. Mr. Signor? Yes. Chairman Denny? Yes. Motion carried. Next thing on the agenda, number six tonight, is BC Senior Living LLC, 2200 Hildeberg Avenue. The applicant requests a waiver of site plan review to revise the entranceway landscaping plan from phase 1B of the village of Whispering Pines. Applicant will be able to share concept plans for phase two, which is in the vicinity of proposed landscaping modifications. Lou, I guess Lou is online. I think he's on. I'm, I'm here somewhere. My video's not working. Sorry about that. I didn't, was that him on there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I guess we can hear you. I don't see you there, but. No, my, video, my video's not working. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, what, do, what are we doing here? You're changing the landscaping going into the entranceway? We're, uh, we're increasing the landscaping plan. Uh, actually, the largest landscaping plan. I can't hear you very well either, Lou. Uh, can you hear me now? That's yeah, better. That's better. Yeah. Yeah, we actually, uh, we enlarged the landscaping plan. You know, we're, we're not hearing you again. Can I try to sign back on? I can't hear him. Okay. No, we can't hear you. Uh, I can try to sign back on. I can hear him now. Are you doing speakerphone or you have the phone up to your ear? Um, I've got it through my computer. I didn't call in. I don't know if I can do it. Okay. Can I call it, it, it fades out. I hey, Lou, it's, uh, it's, it's Peter. If you want to call back in using the telephone number um, rather than your computer, that might work better. I'll do that right now. Okay. Okay. While we're waiting for him, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yep. yeah. All right. On the last application, I just want to point something out now that it's been approved. Um, the planning board doesn't have jurisdiction to determine when a special use permit is required. So um, when uh, this is the town TV property. So when it comes time to occupy, it's going to be an initial determination by the building inspector whether or not they'll, they'll need to come back for special use permit or not. Okay, and they'll apply the same rules they've always applied in terms of new tenants, new uses, that kind of thing. And, and that will be the function of how it will either get back to you or not. Okay. Okay. I tried to raise that before, but apparently my mic wasn't working then. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry, my, my video on my computer wasn't working. Um, so what we did is we enlarged the uh, landscaping plan. Okay. Well, you, you don't have a, a, you can't put it up on the screen to see what exactly you're doing, but. Yeah, my video, for some reason, I can't log in, Peter. I don't know what the problem is with my computer. Uh... Yeah, actually, I might be able to share my screen. Um, I'd have okay. to pull it up, though, but I wanted to, I guess you can kind of, you had sent me the.
Mr. Chairman? Yeah. While we're waiting for Peter to pull up that screen, can I ask a couple of questions to Mr. Lisi? Yeah, I can't, I don't see why not. We'll open it up to the planning to everyone soon and then you can ask your questions. Okay. Whenever you want to open it up, it's fine. We have some drawings. Yeah, they're kind of hard to read. No, yeah, that's what I'm going through now to see what he's talking about. But. Yeah, they're hard to read. Yeah, they actually, I actually, I only got hard copies of the drawings, I believe. Yeah, Peter, I submitted you. You've got all the color renditions of the drawings, correct? Of the new landscape. Yeah, I, I do. I don't have. I thought I might have electronic copies, but I don't. It's gonna be hard to follow, but uh, if you want to do some landscaping changes. That's very obvious. But... Well, it's not like we uh, we we still have the landscaping that was approved on the site plan. We just added more to the right. plan. More what? More trees. More what? Yeah. And then more trees, and on the left hand side of the entranceway to the left, where the Whispering Pines currently sign currently is, that's all now plantings with uh, trees and uh, flowers. Okay. Okay. So, so if you look at the uh, the entranceway to the left of it, there was really nothing there. We we installed all landscaping beds there as well. Okay. Okay. You. Uh, I guess anybody got any questions about the change in landscaping? No, I don't have any questions about the change in landscape. I'm just wondering how we're doing with the water line, the sewer line, and when we're going to see some of these buildings get built out there. <laughs> well, Atta boy. Not the last. Atta boy. Well, the uh, well, just so you know, the first 1,600 feet of the road is in. The water is in. Storm water is in. Uh, we're planning on paving it in about two weeks. Okay. Clubhouse is being sheetrocked tomorrow. The inside's all done. The septic system's in. The pump station's in for the clubhouse. Uh, they start putting in the par clubhouse parking lot in about a week and a half. If the plantings are approved, the plantings go in in two weeks. Uh, so I think by m middle of May, it'll be blacktopped. Uh, landscaping will be in. Water's all the way in to the first fourplex. And we stop because we're still waiting for the sewer to be approved by DEC. That was my next question. When, how are you doing with the uh, the permit to get under the throughway? The permit has been at the supervisor's desk for probably the last four weeks, waiting for his signature. Supervisor being Rotterdam supervisor? Yes. Really? Huh. Brett Steinberg, that's as Brett, and I think Steve authorized it to be electronically signed about two weeks ago, but we still have not received it. Okay. So it's in the town's hand that 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 sewer permit with we've already con we've been we've been in contact with the uh, through authority. They they told us what they needed. Uh, we filled out the permit, and it's got to be signed by Supervisor Thomas. So so we're waiting for that to be signed. Yesterday, uh, all of our sewer drawings were sent to Jamie Malcolm at DEC for final sign-off. We're just waiting for the sewer to be built up Carmen Road to the manhole in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, we have a waiting list now of 85 people for 125 homes. Wow. Outstanding. We get, uh, literally, we get three phone calls a week for people to be on the list. We've got the head manager of CVS out of uh, Newport, Rhode Island, moving back to the area, has got has bought one. We have people from all over, really the Eastern Seaboard, whose families live locally, coming back to visit, be with their kids, are buying here. I think How's we're at 85, is the, we're at 85 right now units. How's the golf course coming? Well, we looked at the uh, my golf superintendent, who's out of Catskill, New York, was up here yesterday. He gave my greens an A minus, and now we have to put sand on top of them to fill in all the low spots. Yeah. So you fill it with sand, and then you back drag it, and then the grass grows through. And over three or four times, the the green will be it'll there won't be any more divots in it. A small, 
you know, imperfections in it. Uh, the irrigation system is already in. The water line is brought in to the clubhouse, ready to be hooked up to the uh, irrigation system. So, that, Mr. Yule, we've, we've come a long way in uh, four or five months. Yeah, oh, good. I just hadn't, I hadn't seen any buildings being built out there. And I was saying to Mr. Collins the other day, this is the prime time. People are chomping at the bit for houses because they're very limited on the market. So, uh, But I don't have any sewers. I don't have any sewers. No sewers. There's no building going to be. <laughs> I, I, don't have, I, I don't have sewers. I mean, I've got people that want, want me to start last week. I don't have sewers. Can you say four yeah. or <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, good luck. We have, a, we have, we have one lady that's who's the first person on my list, uh, Mary Majanowski, who's had three bouts of cancer, wants to be to start her house six months ago. Uh, don't have sewers. Now, remember, the clubhouse works is on a septic system. Right. So that's why the clubhouse will be, uh, you know, that'll be that's already sided. I don't know if you've been out there, that's been sided. Uh, she recite they start sheer rocking tomorrow, Wednesday. Uh, let's let's get the back to the, the landscaping, the landscaping drawings. Uh, anybody else have any questions about the landscaping? So, I, I no, have the landscaping drawings. Of, I have them here. So I, I found them, they were under another email address. Um, would you like me to share my screen? Can you do that? That'd be great. Please do that. And then I found, also found your renderings there that you sent me. Oh, right? thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Love to show those. All right, let me, let me figure out how to do this. Share screen. We are bringing the second phase in, hopefully in the next 30 days. That's better. <laughs> Am I sharing the whole the whole thing there? This is new. Well, you got half of one and half of the other. There you go. That's good. Oh, oh. So there's the overall. Uh, right, right there, right there, Peter, right there. So if you look at this plan. All right, I'll let you narrate, and then uh, I'll scroll for you. Okay. If we go to the entranceway, to the left of the entranceway, all those that landscaping up north is all brand new. Um, and that's okay. a breakdown of all the uh, items that are going to be on here. Um, we actually added more trees on the north side as well as well as on the south side. Uh, if you go to the, and the so Peter, if you go to the next page, this one here, or the, uh, that well, that's the entrance. We a little bit closer. Go to the next one. And then you got this trees coming up the other side. Norway spruce. Correct. Right? Yep. And those are all those are not on the original plan. And that it, go to the next slide, Pete. That continues up the roadway. Uh, keep going, Peter. And to continue all the way to the curve, to where the mm -hmm. clubhouse starts. And that's the clubhouse like the opposite that curve? Correct. Correct. And that's the entrance correct. to the clubhouse? Okay. Yeah, that's right that's correct. Right curve. Correct, right on the curve. So the tr so we've, we've probably increased the landscape probably about 35% to what was originally approved. What? And then the other curb, the other curb cut into phase two is like in here somewhere, right, Lo? That's correct. Okay. Those little then, yellow dots, those little yellow dots, Peter. If you see, those are light posts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's the side. You'll see the sidewalk to the north. But these, we've increased the landscaping tremendously from what was proved. Yes. Good. Okay. Do you want to see the? Uh, you want the other renderings there? Yeah, if you got it, Peter. Let's just, yeah, I, I mean, I don't mind introducing it before they see it. Not that one. Rendering. Oh, that's there nice. It yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Can you see that? So that's the so that's the perspective, Pete, if you want to go. And if you notice what we did here, and for those that are Italians, this is, <laughs> this is like a little, this is like a, a, a little piazza look with the red tile roofs. <laughs> in the cream color uh, walls on the outside. Uh, so it's kind of a little like a Florence uh, look to keep coming up. You see that crossing bridge, that crossing bridge crosses over from the independent living side to the memory care and assisted living side. That's to the right left there. is the port. Right that's there, what right? that is. That, yep, that's what that is there. To the left is the portico share. That's where you enter into the independent side. Uh, and this is this is kind of a walkway, kind of a courtyard where the seniors can actually socialize and uh, and, and and you know just hang out. Uh, 
during the day or people that live in the cottages can come here as well. If you go to the I next one, Peter. The, I don't see the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, Rotterdam being an Italian town, in my opinion, but this kind of fits right in. Um, <laughs> You're supposed to put a window on there. <laughs> good, oh God! Can you go to the next one, Pete? A perspective three. All right, this is looking at it. I think this is looking at it from the golf course side. I believe. I don't. I can't picture this, but these are the independent living sides, the one to the right. And I think there's an overview, Pete, looking down an aerial view of this. Uh, that's coming. That's coming in. Oh, Pete, go back. Go. Oh, uh, number four. <laughs> That's coming up the roadway, and there's the sidewalk along the side of the road, and that's the independent living side. Go to the next one, Pete. Perspective five. Hmm. Okay, that's that's the same footprint that was on the improved map, right? Uh, there is your pool, uh, meeting rooms in the middle, the memory care and assisted living are to the north, independent living is to the south. To the right, you'll see the golf course. Uh, to the east, you'll see the golf course parking lot. That's good. Weren't the independent livings going to have underground parking, or did that get? No, out, no, it's outside parking. It, there's no under par There's no underground parking. Okay. All right. No. Nope. It looks nope. nice. Looks good. Oh, yeah. So. It's a nice way. So out. we it took it took the architect about well, we worked, we spent about eight weeks getting all this to fit in the footprint that we got approved to make the units work. Um, and I think Brett Steinberg is now in the process of doing the infrastructure design work for this. And we're going to hopefully present it next month or so. That's our goal. And again, that needs sewers also, correct? Yeah, but the sewers for this is will go to the sewers that are in the infrastructure for the uh, cottages. Okay. So the only thing left here will be a pump station pumping it to the sewer line, which then goes down to the other pump station. Okay. So it all, it, what, we, what was approved for phase one and one B, the infrastructure is already in place for this next phase. Okay. Well, uh, at this time, guys, uh, if we get the waiver to for the site plan review of the landscaping, I need a motion. I'll make a motion and we approve the uh, landscaping. More uh, more landscaping wouldn't wouldn't hurt at all. It yeah. looks very nice. I'll second. Yeah. Okay, I'll second. I'll second. Yeah, I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Signer on the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Good luck. We we learn more about whispering pines tonight. And we've had in a while, right, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Boy, I'll tell you. I mean, I like I like the layout he's showing us, and hopefully that's going to be well in a while. It'll be a while, but it'll, it'll get done. But it will get done. Uh, number seven here is not on tonight. Am I right, Peter? That's okay. correct. They have to be they have to be withdrawn. Um, they should be on for the uh, May fourth meeting, though. Okay. Uh, the last name, Tom and Rotterdam. Report and recommendation to the town board on modifications to the town zoning court code to allow planning commission in certain circumstances to modify the required number of parking spaces and off street loading requirements as part of the site plan review. Mr. Tingley, you're on. Did you, did you hear me? Yep. Yes. And I assume you all can hear me again. Yep. Um, yes. So as we've seen in the past, including for instance, on the O'Reilly Auto Parts project, uh, the planning commission has been presented with evidence that sometimes the parking requirements of the zoning code are quite frankly too much and that a particular proposal justifies less parking. Under the town's current zoning, um, obviously during site plan review, the board has jurisdiction over parking and traffic and circulation and things of that nature. But under the town law, the town law, New York State town law says that um, the during a site plan review, the town board can authorize the planning commission to waive, reduce, or modify parking uh, or any requirements, quite frankly. And given the parking and loading requirements that we've seen in the past, um, and although in some cases 
those issues can be addressed by banking parking spots. There may be situations where parcels are not large enough to accommodate even banked parking spots. And you may run into an issue where an applicant finds himself forced to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get a variance on parking or loading when really the Planning Commission, which is dealing with internal circulation, parking and things like that, is probably just as well suited, if not more well suited to address that issue. So in sum and substance, the state law allows the Planning Commission, if the town board authorizes it, uh, to waive, reduce or modify otherwise applicable dimension regulations such as parking and loading. Uh, and that's what the town board is currently considering whether or not to do that. So I don't see any issue with the Planning Commission having that authority. It would make the process more efficient, uh, allow applicants to get your waiver of parking requirements and loading requirements rather than having to seek a, a variance from the zoning board. Um, and so what I've prepared for your consideration is a draft positive recommendation. I did email that to you, I believe last night. Yep, uh, got it. So it's up to the board if it wants to act on that this evening, but it is in if, if you've reviewed that and you're comfortable with it, you certainly are in a position to act on it. Okay, uh, what we can do is uh, pull the board. I, I, and I think we we'll, shouldn't have a problem with it, but I'm gonna pull the board and get their, their idea or vote or whatever. Mr. Yule. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. I read over the uh, proposal that John sent and it makes sense to me when mm -hmm. we're reviewing a project rather than send somebody to another board that only meets once a month and just putting another step or another layer in the process really never made sense to me. And I always thought we had the uh, right to do this. You know, there were other attorneys who said we could do this. So um, I have no problem with it at all. I, I would say we send back a positive recommendation to the town board. Okay, you know what? I, I don't think you really have to pull, pull the whole board. John, no, do we need to vote here on this or? Yeah, you, someone should uh, make a motion to adopt the re recommendation with a second and vote on it. Okay. Tom, go ahead. You were... Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we, we adopt that resolution and uh, as written by the uh, planning board attorney. And I'll second it. I'll second it. I'll second it, Mr. Del Zandra. I'll beat you to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the vote, please. Mr. Yule. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mrs. Flansburg. Yes. Mr. Del Sandro. Yes. Mr. Signor. Yes. Chairman Denny. Yes. That's the motion carry that puts in the ball in your park there, Mr. Tingley. Oh, it puts it back in the town board's court. Yeah, right. That's right. Okay, I guess the, we're just about finished with what we had to do tonight. It was uh, all waivers all night, but. And uh, I think we're, we're finished with, with our meeting tonight. Dana, you can like- uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Well, yes, that's right. Sorry, Mr. Collins. Motion <laughs> made by Mr. Collins to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. There you go. Dana, do you hear?